A lot of people say to me that my calling happened when I was young and that um, I couldn't hear it because I was not ready. And so in my um, mid-adulthood is when I started to realize what was happening. That was probably about 12 years ago, 15. I remember that my mentor, Cynthia Park, told me before I went to seminary, after I had done my PCOM work and I got green flags, she said to me, something bad is going to happen to you in the middle of all of this. And I was like, well, that sounds terrible. And frankly, I didn't believe her because I just kind of went through it naturally. The whole process seemed well and good and right. and. In my uh, senior year at seminary, I got cancer. I was diagnosed with cancer. And I thought about Cynthia almost immediately after the diagnosis. Like, is this going to stall out my process? Will I be ordained? And of course, eventually I was, and I am, by the grace of God, uh, cured of that cancer. Um, but I didn't know then that the something bad that's going to happen to you wasn't necessarily the process of ordination, but also just part and parcel of being a woman. And I don't think that I had come to grips with that until most recently when you're forced to experience it. I wouldn't have necessarily called myself a feminist before this. I wouldn't have thought that I would have ever conceived of uh, having a women clergy group for the diocese, which another uh, woman clergy person and I are talking about doing, but I have been forced to. Um, and while that is sad, it's also really hopeful because I feel like there's room now to have that conversation. Uh, if I were born even 30 years ago, not sure that there would be room for that kind of conversation. 50 years of ordination to the priesthood is a pretty short time in the history of the church and uh, shorter even in the history of human beings. <laughs> um, and when we talk about apostolic life, I think we're talking about the whole kingdom of God on earth, um, being able to celebrate and bless and pray and be with people. Uh, so I think that the 50th anniversary means that I'm in the right place. The Episcopal Church is the right place to be uh, because we have made that courageous jump as it should be. It also, though, reminds me that we have a lot of work to do. And as the Episcopal Church, if we've already made this jump, then we have to tell the world. We can't stay insular. I grew up in the Greek Orthodox Church first. And uh, there certainly wasn't a space for women there. Um, there are even some seasons of life where women can't even worship on certain weeks of the month. Um, so I think that my ability to get where I am now, uh, not just in my thinking, but the way that I preach, the way that I teach, the way that I'm with people in my congregation has come so far because I am called. It's nothing that I did uh, in order to get to a place. It's because of what God is doing with each one of us. I think me just being who I am is a good uh, reminder to people that they should be who they are authentically because we're not gonna get anywhere called church if we're not being authentic. And the whole universal church needs to start doing that. Young or old, um, I would say maybe a, a little edited version of what my mentor said to me. Something bad is going to happen to you, semicolon, and something incredible, something beyond words, size too deep for words. Uh, because the ordained life is a microcosm of what all of life is in general. Um, it's just kind of packed into a small space where um, this morning I did ministration at the time of death. And before that, I met someone to talk about um, buying new furniture for uh, my deacon's office and how joyous it is that kids are running around at VBS right now at church. 
I think uh, to women, to young women, I would say keep discerning, keep walking, whether or not you feel like something good or something bad is happening to you, be present, be present in the moment.